So what is going on guys, Nandabrit93 here with another video and what I wanted to do today was show you guys what's on my iPad Pro in 2020 on iPadOS 14. You know, a lot of us have moved over from iPadOS 13 to iPadOS 14 on the beta version at least if you're a public developer. So I wanted to show you guys whether or not some of the applications that were made for iPadOS 13 still worked for the new version of iPadOS 14 because sometimes these applications aren't required to update and make sure that their apps work on the new software until the fall when it's released to the actual public. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of applications, make sure they work, and also to show you what's on my iPad Pro in 2020 for iPadOS 14. So I'm gonna break it down into three different categories. We're gonna do traditional workflow, so you know applications that I use for my traditional nine to five job, then YouTube workflow, so applications that I use for the YouTube channel, you know, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. And then lastly, kind of like a leisure category of applications that I use, you know, for fun, to pass time, when I'm not doing those other two things that I just mentioned. So let's hop right into this video and get it going, guys. The first category that we're gonna to touch on is the traditional work apps that I use, guys. So if you guys haven't seen, obviously my most popular video on the channel, it's right here. It's how well Microsoft applications or Office 365 applications work on the iPad Pro. And I'm gonna highlight three major ones that I use pretty much on a daily basis, and that's Outlook, Teams, and OneDrive. So for my actual work, we're very into the Microsoft ecosystem. So being able to collaborate via email on the Outlook app, and Outlook actually looks very, very pretty for the iPad Pro. So I highly recommend using Outlook as a actual mail client because it not only works for your Outlook email, but it works for any other email. So if you have Gmail, Yahoo, whatever the case may be, you can use it on Microsoft Outlook. But I use Microsoft Outlook strictly for work. That's the only actual email that I have on it right now. And I just really like how well it works. It uses multitasking very well with uh, iPad OS 13 and 14. So being able to have two versions of the same instance of application works really well. The multitasking works between OneDrive and Outlook and Teams. So being able to just move files back and forth, that works extremely well as well. So my main Microsoft apps that I use on the iPad Pro at least are Outlook, Teams, and OneDrive, mostly for collaboration within the actual company between employees and things like that. So that's what I use on a daily basis. The other ones like PowerPoint, Excel, Word, I don't use them as much on the actual iPad Pro. I use them when I need to use them, right? So for instance, if I need to touch up a document really quickly on Word, I'll do it on the iPad Pro if I need to, right? So it, those use cases for the iPad Pro and Office 365 work. If you guys want a more in-depth analysis of what works and what doesn't versus like a traditional desktop version of Office 365, take a look at this video again. I'm gonna put it in the iCards right there, guys. But those are the main applications that I use for work when it comes to a Microsoft standpoint. And then there's four more apps that I do wanna to touch on for you guys. Now that we're in this work from home environment, we have to find a way to communicate with each other. And for some reason, Zoom has been like the default. So I have Zoom already loaded up. We use Zoom on a daily basis to communicate with each other. So, and then another main one has to be LinkedIn. So like I spend all day, every day on LinkedIn. That's pretty much my job. So the fact that the mobile application works really well and it works well as just like the normal LinkedIn website on Safari, is just an awesome thing to have. So LinkedIn is in there as like my, my must have applications for my job. And then the last two um, are a little bit, again, more supplemental, right? It's, I have shift screen, which you guys can see on the screen right here. So shift screen just allows me to kind of open up documents, open up websites at full screen with a secondary monitor without having to mirror the display on the actual iPad. So I use that pretty often. And then lastly is Chime Bank. That's my bank. I've done a video review on Chime Bank before because they're like a technology company first. And a bunch of you actually signed up for Chime. So kudos to you guys for hooking, it, hooking us up. But I just like Chime Bank a lot because get my direct deposit there. There's no overdraft fees, no late fees, no minimums to have in there. They don't, they don't charge you five bucks a month or you don't have like a, a minimum spend that you have to hit so they don't charge you a monthly fee. So really like Chime Bank, highly recommend it. And again, I'm gonna link pretty much everything in the description below guys, but that pretty much does it for the traditional work apps that I use on a daily basis for the quote unquote nine to five job. So let's move right along to the YouTube portion, which is probably what you guys came here to see, right? So the YouTube portion is actually not that crazy. In order for me to get these videos out to you guys, the system, you know, the process is very, very simple. The first thing we start with is the camera app, right? So camera app, even though I don't really use the camera app on the iPad Pro too much, I've used it on occasion for some B-roll when the lighting is really good, but I use my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is standing on this little, 
this little tripod that I have going on right here. And then from there, just airdrop those files onto the iPad Pro. So I'm a big photos, so I use the photos app as my photo editor. That's my photo editor of choice. Whenever I have a thumbnail, it's edited on the photos app on the iPad Pro. And then there's another app, which I'll touch on in a second, that I do to like finalize thumbnails. But I use the photos app and the camera app, obviously to get not only my recording done, but then move stuff from my iPhone onto my iPad Pro. And once, once that's done, then I just edit it all on LumaFusion. LumaFusion is my editing or my video editing app of choice. There is iMovie. I do recommend iMovie for people that do not want to spend any money because it is a free application and that are brand new to the scene. Like play around with iMovie once you've pretty much perfected every single portion of iMovie because there isn't much. There isn't much on iMovie that you can do, but it does get the job done, especially in the beginning. And then after that, if you're on an iPad Pro, then I do recommend LumaFusion. Depending on when you actually buy it, it could be 20 to 40 bucks, depending on what sales they have going on. But I remember, I think I got it for 20 bucks about a year ago and it's handled every single video that I posted. So every video that I posted on this channel is from LumaFusion, or at least dating back to mid July last year. It has been done on LumaFusion and reported on either an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 11 Pro Max. So just keep that in mind, guys. And then the rest of the apps that I have for like the YouTube workflow are just supplemental apps, right? So I use, I use an app called Pickstitch, which is what I use for thumbnails also. If I have like a certain idea, for instance, I'll show you guys a thumbnail that I use Pickstitch for right here. It just gives you, it allows you to put two pictures together in one. And I really, really like it because it's really easy to use. It's on my iPhone and on my iPad. And then you have the main ones, right? I use Safari to upload the final, the finalized video from LumaFusion into YouTube. So I use YouTube through Safari. I don't use the YouTube app. Then I have YouTube Studio, which I use pretty much just to answer comments because outside of that, I like using YouTube Studio you know, website to actually look at all the analytics and stuff. It's a little, it's actually, it's a lot better than the YouTube studio app in my opinion. And then obviously the last two has to be Twitter. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's right here. It's where I communicate with most of you guys. And then I also restarted the Instagram account. So it's the same thing. It's still Nando Prince 93 for the Instagram account. And that's mostly just going to be posting a lot of, you know, setups that people have with their iPad pros and what my current setup is and things like that. Maybe some some uh, behind the scenes action of how I record these videos as well. So give, give me a follow on Instagram if you guys get the chance. And that pretty much does it for the YouTube category. It's very simple. Like I said, it goes from phone to iPad, then from iPad into YouTube. That's it. It's a three step pop. Uh, it's a three. It's a three step process. And the part that takes the longest is obviously the editing, right? The editing is what takes the longest, but the workflow that I have on the iPad Pro, I don't want to change it. That's why I'm so hesitant in buying a dedicated camera because getting the stuff from the camera onto the iPad Pro is going to be one extra step that I just don't really need or that I don't really have right now with the iPhone 11 Pro because it just airdrops over. So that's something that I'm kind of working on, figuring out if I do want to upgrade and get an actual dedicated camera for the channel. But that's, that's going to do it for the YouTube applications. And now I'm just gonna highlight a couple of my leisure applications that I use on a day to day. There's four that I do wanna to touch on. One has to be Marvel Strike Force. If you guys have followed me before, I've mentioned them before. They're my favorite game to play on either my iPhone or my iPad. I've been playing it pretty much every day. I think I've missed a total of one week over the last four months playing that game. So I highly recommend it, it's pretty addictive. That's my, that's my go-to game recommendation for anybody on an iOS device. And then obviously you have the the hard hitters, right? I use the YouTube app all the time just to watch content. I've been using Apple TV a lot lately, actually. Not the actual Apple TV, but like Apple TV Plus. I am a member of it. I think I have until September, actually, when my one year subscription for free runs out. So I really, really like their content. Will I pay for it in the future, that $4.99 price point? I think I'm going to actually stick with them and pay for their service moving forward. So Apple TV is a plus. HBO Max is awesome. YouTube is there. And that pretty much does it for my leisure um, applications that's purely done just a pastime but that's pretty much gonna do it for this video that is beginning to end for my professional work applications my YouTube applications and then my leisure applications that I wanted to highlight obviously I have a bunch more but I don't use them day to day I wanted to highlight only the important ones that I use all the time and that's pretty much gonna do it for this video guys so far I've had no issues with any of the apps on running on iPad OS 14 I've heard that Pokemon Go on the iPhone is kind of glitchy it doesn't work sometimes on iPad OS or iOS 14, but for the apps that I use, so like LumaFusion, the Photos app, Pixlr, Pickstitch, all the apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis still work perfectly fine, which is awesome to see. I can still upload videos. I've already uploaded, I think, three or four videos from iPadOS 14 on the iPad Pro. So if you are kind of hesitating, thinking if you want to make the upgrade, the upgrade is good. The only issue that I've had is with the widgets, because the widgets, 
the widget screen is a little bit glitchy for me, but other than that, it's all worked perfectly well, including all the scribble features, that which was probably the most important part, guys. But that's gonna do it for this video. I know it's a long one, but I do appreciate every single one of you. Let's get the 10K here. 10k subs here soon guys but don't forget to like comment subscribe and until next time peace